And this is section six of Mastering Cute Programming, which covers visual representations. So let's go ahead and get started with charts in QML. In this video, we're going to cover static graph resources, dynamic line graphs, and finally, dynamic scatter graphs. Let's get started. If you're working with static data, the Qt chart QML examples are going to be your best bet. Here you can find demos for pi, line, spline, area, scatter, and bar series examples. So what is there left to cover? Well, these examples are great if you have static data, you know, data that you can write into your source code. In my experience, static data graphs are the hilarious minority of cases for graphs needed in applications. Most of the time, we're going to need to generate graphs on the fly after doing some calculations. So how do we generate graphs on the fly? Let's go ahead and find out. The first thing to note here is that the Qt charts is actually dependent on Qt widgets. So as before, where we're using a Qt GUI application, if you're going to use Qt charts with QML, you need to actually switch to a Qt application. That can save you some time. So once we've got that set up, the first thing that we're going to need is some data. Now, for this example, I've actually included some data. We're going to plot the land speed records from the last 60 or 70 years. So the first thing that we need to do for this case, and uh, these are basically the speed that it was done and the actual date. So we need to create an instance of our data. And one thing to note here is that our data is actually in a list model. And the reason I did this is so that it can be easily incorporated into a list view so that you can display the list view and the chart right next to it, which you can do after we're done with this example and you've got everything running. So now that we've got our data, the next thing that we're going to need is chart view, which is where our data will be displayed. We're going to creatively ID it chart view in lowercase, and we'll give it a title of land speed records. Perfect, so our land speed record data is going to be the actual date that it was broken and the value in kilometers per hour that were driven. So we're gonna to need to create two accesses, one value access for the speed and one date time access for the date. The next thing that we're gonna do is set mins and maxes for both of our accesses because the data will be plotted off the chart with the default values if we don't. So we'll go ahead and set the min and max properties for both of these. The last thing that we're gonna do is go ahead and set a format up for the date time axis because the default is a little verbose. Cool, so now that we've got both of our axes defined, let's go ahead and create a line series that will plot this for us. Awesome, so we're gonna go ahead and uncomment this initialization or this component on completed line. And what you can see here is we call this function add data to series, and we actually pass in the line series that we just created. So if we scroll down to where we define this uh, add data to series function, basically we need to iterate through our data. So that's what we're gonna do here. We've got a for loop, and we're going to go from i equal to zero to i equal the count of all our data. And then we're going to get access to each of our list items. So just as a reminder, the list items look something like this. And we're going to get access to them each individually using the get method, passing in our i value. And we want to get a hold of our two data information, which is our speed and our date. Now we do need to change our year in or our date into a date format instead of a string. And we can do this using the parse method. So once we've got our data in both the speed and the date, the last thing we need to do is go ahead and append it or add it to our actual series. Awesome, so let's go ahead and run this and see how it looks. You can see we've got our line chart with our min and our max and our land speed records. Now, this isn't super helpful because it's kind of hard to tell exactly where the data points are. You can see it in the elbows or the bends, but it's kind of hard to see for our more linear stuff where it is. So let's go ahead and add a scatter chart in here. So you look at this code and scroll all the way down to the bottom, you can see that I've added a toolbar to do that, or in a tool button to do that, add scatter. Um, so let's go to it's on clicked, and you can see I've got a guard here so that we only create this one time. So let's go ahead and we're gonna use the create series function in our chart view to add another series to it. And then we'll pass in this name, which will be scatter, and our x and y axis. 
So the last thing that we need to do is go ahead and add our data to it. So we've created the chart successfully or the series successfully, but we haven't added data to it. Luckily, we've got our method that we created and implemented this add data to series. And so we'll just call this again with our scatter series that we just created. So let's run this one more time. And then let's click this add scatter button. And you can see now it's much clearer and easier to see where the individual points are happening on our land speed records. Now, this still looks slightly wrong. And the reason is we should have really just plotted this as a scatter series. And then typically what you'll see for charts is we'd actually use a line series to show us the trend, how our land speed record is trending. So I challenge you to refactor this code and convert our line series to a scatter series and then dynamically calculate and plot the linear trend line of the land speed records as a line series. And with that, we successfully demonstrated how to create dynamic and linear and scatter graphs in addition to reviewing the static graph resource documentation.